I mean, this is just wrong. They're bidding away assets from private investors to try and prop up the stock market and fool people into thinking the economy is good so that they'll go out and spend, and it doesn't work. And they've done this with interest rates down at one-third of 1%, one and it's still failing. Now I'm going to prove to you that Keynesian economics doesn't work. And this is the discount rate for the Bank of Japan. So it's similar to the Fed funds rate that you saw earlier, but this is for Japan. And one thing that I find interesting here is the Federal Reserve, uh, there, the, if you do charting on the Federal Reserve, it'll automatically put these shaded bars of recessions, but these aren't Japanese recessions. These are the US recessions. And this was very enlightening. Uh, you know, this is, goes back into the 50s. And if you go back in the 40s, our economies were not connected. They started to become connected in the 50s, and they got very connected in the 60s and the 70s because we were by far Japan's largest market. And when we experience a recession, shortly thereafter, Japan experiences a recession, and then they react to it by cutting interest rates. If you recall the federal funds rate, when a recession would start, the Federal Reserve would instantly cut rates. The moment that recession starts, you'd see rates start to fall. Uh, here, what you see is we have a recession, and then sometime shortly after that, Japan cuts interest rates. So this is their recession delayed just a little bit because uh, all of the corporate income falls because during our recession, we, stop, we, we don't purchase as many goods from them. So their economy then suffers. And you see this delay of them starting their rate cuts. And, but just like the, the, uh, in the United States, they continue the rate cuts until they stimulate the economy and they start an economic boom, but they lay the foundation of the next bubble. And then the economy starts to overheat and they start the next rate cuts. So this is their recession right after our recession. They start the next rate cuts and their economy starts to overheat. And then they start raising rates when the economy overheats and they pop their next bubble. But this is all in response to this little bit of time delay from our recessions. It's very, very interesting that these rate cuts, with the exception of the Ronald Reagan double dip recession here that we had back in the 80s, um, uh, they had a recession that appears, to, you know, it was just one recession that, uh, res that was in response to this recession, the first recession that we had during the Reagan era. And they kept on cutting rates until they got their economy to boom, but they made a big mistake. That comes in a couple of frames here. But they lowered interest rates all the way down to one-tenth of one percent here. I'm going to show you here, Keynesian economics does not work. I'm going to add one more line. Now, the reason this chart jumps so much is because I'm going to add a bunch of uh, a legend to this to the right side of the graph. And so the chart becomes compressed, and I'm going to add one more line. As I add lines to this, it becomes more and more difficult to read, but I'm doing it in stages so that it, it makes it easy on you. You can read this easily. Now, we know that the Bank of Japan quintupled. They made their currency supply of base currency five times larger than it was when the crisis of 08 began. And what did they do with that? This is interesting. You know, they've got interest rates down here close to zero. This is 1% up here. So I believe this is a third of a percent. They did this in a very short time period, and they're still doing it. It's still got this northern trajectory where they're creating currency. What did they do with most of that currency? And this next frame is the frame that proves that Keynesian economics doesn't work. I'm going to add one more data set to this. This is the interest rate the currency creation, and the Nikkei 225 index. This is the 225 largest publicly traded companies in Japan. And I've scaled this so that it, it uh, uh, 
uses up most of the area on this graph, but there is no legend for it, so there's no scale that you can see. But th I believe it topped out at about uh, 38,000 or 39,000. It was just a whisker away from 40,000 points. Uh, but what you see here is this recession that we had and then the following response, the recession in Japan that happened, they cut rates dramatically. And then right about here when they got down to 5.5%, uh, they started creating an enormous stock market bubble. And this thing took off like a rocket, just totally insane. And look at what happens when they get down to like 2.5%. So they've gone from 9% down to just 2.5%. Now that's almost free currency. And the stock market took off like a rocket and created a, a bubble economy. And this time period right across here is when the Japanese were going around the world and buying up all of the uh, world's finest assets. They bought Rockefeller Center. They bought all the tallest buildings in Chicago and Los Angeles. I used to live in Los Angeles near MGM Studios. When I was a kid, I used to sneak into the back lots of, of MGM Studios and play when I was a little kid. I've been in, I see an old movie and I go, I've, I've been in that house. That's just a fake house front. You go walk in the front door, there's nothing behind it. I used to, uh, when I was a teenager, there was a hole in the fence that uh, butted up to uh, the fields where Standard Oil had all of these uh, oil pumps and oil derricks going on. And we used to ride motorcycles out there. And I'd go in during the daytime and ride my motorcycle through the lot and security would chase me. I mean, we would terrorize. It was fun. We were kids. We were probably interrupting some movie because of the uh, sound of our motorcycles. Uh, it's interesting. I watch an old Twilight Zone today, and in the background, I can see the standard oil fields where I used to ride. But uh, they bought what was MGM Studios. It's now Sony Studios. It was Sony St Studios, and then it became Turner. Ted Turner bought it, and it was Turner Studios for a little while. He sold it to another company, and then Sony bought it in this time frame. Th it was said that the little tiny island that the Imperial Palace is on in the center of Tokyo was worth more than the, the value of that land was worth more than the entire state of California during this time period. But because their central bank had created this enormous bubble, when that bubble popped, and then through Keynesian economics, they come in and they create currency to uh, prop up the banking system, to prop up companies that should have failed. They went into what's called a zombified economy. I've got friends that live in Japan. And this area here where their stock market, I mean, their stock market is still half of what it was back in uh, 1989. So it's, it's approaching 30 years here, three decades of a lost zombified economy that Japan is stuck in grinding sideways and they can't get out it because out of it because they never let the free market clear they didn't allow the bankruptcies to happen and the you know it, they, their recession could have turned into a short-lived depression but they would have come out of it with a healthy clean economy and healthy com companies that could compete in the free market and serve their population uh, much better than they're serving them today They've got what's called a zombified economy. And when I talk with uh, people in Japan, they say, oh, yeah, the economy's lousy and it's been lousy for so long. Well, this currency creation, where did it go? The, they actually, the Bank of Japan actually creates currency and they go into the stock market and they purchase stocks. More than half of the Nikkei 225, the 225 largest companies in Japan, publicly traded companies, are now owned by the Bank of Japan. So they've been buying up stocks trying to get the stock market going, and they're even failing at that. The stock market is falling one more time, and this crash that we're going to experience is going to be global. And so I would expect that this is going to go back down into this area again and the, all of this currency creation 
and them buying up half of the stock market, which is so immoral. I mean, this is just wrong. They're bidding away assets from private investors to try and prop up the stock market and fool people into thinking the economy is good so that they'll go out and spend and it doesn't work. And they've done this with interest rates down at one third of 1% and it's still failing. And the problem is if you talk to any of these Keynesian economists that are running things, what they're going to tell you is that, oh, it isn't our theories that are wrong, and it isn't our models that are broken. Those have to be correct. Those theories absolutely have to be correct. They're right. What's wrong is that we didn't do enough of it. Baloney. Look at what they've done. They've tried to manipulate the economy. It doesn't work. The free market always wins in the end, but the free market punishes all of these manipulations. And the punishment this time is going to be horrific because the same thing is going on all over the world as you saw in that chart earlier that also had the European Central Bank in it, the currency creation uh, growth. So what is happening in Japan? Why are they trapped in this thing? It's, there was a, an economist named Richard Koo.